Hello valued viewers, I hope you're all doing very well. Welcome to 2 ATAF campaign. Should be interesting. Matrix send. Good evening everyone. Uh, I hope you've all enjoyed the recent Op Rhubarb campaigns, but I'm going to do something slightly different tonight with this mission. This is the first mission in what I hope will be a campaign, uh, replicating the conditions in 1984 in Central Europe when the Warsaw Pact and NATO opposed each other across the inner German border. The date of the moment is 13th of April 1984, and it's early in the morning. Uh, mission synopsis is that this morning, um, after a long build-up, Warsaw Pact forces attacked across the inner-German border at 0500. The initial engagements occurred between Federal, German, uh, Federal Republic of German forces and Warsaw Pact scouts. This clearly es quickly escalated, with uh, Warsaw Pact armour being engaged by NATO anti-armour forces, mainly infantry with ATGMs quickly followed by engagement between the main forces of armour and infantry. NATO attack helicopters have also been engaged because they're a bit closer to the front line, supported by some close air, air support aircraft. NATO uh, plan calls for all NATO uh, 2 ATF attack, uh, attack aircraft to assist the ground forces in the early part of the battle. The expected threat is large masses of Warsaw Pact armour supported by mounted infantry and infantry fighting vehicles and mobile air defence and the main objective of this mission is to uh, get in, do some close air support and take out as much of the armour and air defence forces in particular so that the other NATO units like ground units and helicopters can have a slightly easier time of things. So if we move on to the additional details tab please Cap. So the objectives in the second paragraph, supporting ground forces in the area of operations and particularly looking for uh, as a priority also packed air defences consisting mostly of ZSU-23-4 Schilke, possibly ZU-57-2 uh, twin-barrel 57mm uh, anti-aircraft cannon, and in the rear areas you may find SAM-8 Gecko mobile surface-to-air missile systems, and possibly SAM-6 Gainful, also uh, mobile uh, surface-to-air missile systems. Those are the priority targets. If we can't find any of those, the priority is to take out any armour that we can do, the MBTs, generally uh, T-64s and T-72s at the time, and failing that, any other uh, enemy forces in the advance, such as infantry or uh, armoured infantry fighting vehicles. The weather today is not particularly good. The wind is uh, south-southwesterly at 6 knots. The visibility is 3,100 metres. Broken cloud at 9,500 feet with uh, patches below that. Plus 13, plus 9, rain and showers expected. 1013 and prob 40 tempo <coughs> deterioration standard broken at 3,200 in rain. Threats listed. Enemy triple area, triple A in the area of operation, particularly the Shilker as mentioned. Enemy ground fire from infantry, they're expected to be mounted, but there may be some dismounted with SAM-7 Grail. This is assessed by Intel as a low threat, as most of the infantry will remain mounted due to the speed of the advance. Enemy SAMs, particularly Gainful and Gecko in the rear, uh, but still mobile. SO uh, SA-3 Goa in the rear areas, but in fixed uh, positions. Enemy aircraft, particularly MiG-21-23, but we do have our own cat forces, uh, American F-15s out of Susterberg and Dutch F-16s out of Leeuwarden to take care of any enemy aircraft threats. And due to the intensity of the uh, air defences over the battlefield, it's not expected that enemy aircraft will be a particular threat. Friendly fire is a big threat, so just keep an eye out. And don't fire on uh, any friendly forces. Uh, the other threat might be enemy action against base airfields. Intel assesses this as low threat, but be prepared to divert if necessary. So the mission itself, firstly, each flight member shall call within their flight, ready to taxi to the flight lead. Flight leads will taxi and take off in formation, make it pairs uh, formation takeoff. Depart straight ahead on the runway centerline for at least five miles before returning to your first waypoint. Maintain speed less than 420 knots and height less than 2,000 feet in the uh, initial part of the uh, transit. Continue along the route via the waypoints to initial point Adder. That's waypoint two or three, depending on which you're flying. And at that point, you can arm up, drop to operational flight, and fly at operational speeds up to 540 knots. Between waypoints four and six, search for and destroy the enemy uh, defense and armor as briefed, and expect the enemy forces to be east of the waypoints but aren't advancing towards the west. I make it down to one pass, releasing all your weapons in one pass or maybe two, particularly if you have different weapons on board as the Harriers do. Uh, and then exfil via waypoint 7, which is again add a safe your weapons there, reduce to 420 knots and climb back up to 2,000 feet. Don't stray more than 5 miles away from your track um, 
unless you're attacked by enemy forces, because you may well be at risk from a friendly cat. Return to your base by five miles five mile straight in final approach and land. Refuel, rearm, and go and do it again if you've got time. Okay, so there's a bit of information on the RF uh, tactical formations used. The only one we'll use today is Arrow, which is a fairly loose fighting wing for aircraft, or as many as you need. Uh, waypoints are shown, Latin longs there, the air, airports you're taking off from. The Buccaneers and Jaguars from Larbrook and Bruggen have an additional entry point waypoint, which will probably be waypoint one in their systems. The Harriers will have waypoint one listed as waypoint one in their system. So waypoint one for the Jaguars and the Buccaneers will probably be waypoint two in their INS. So proceed along the waypoints and the waypoints are there as designated. Uh, three maps with heading and track boxes and time to help you if your INS fails or just as a, an aid memoir for navigation. Sabre, 14th Squadron with the F-18 Hornets. Cover, Cap, Whistler and Track. Eagle, 20th Squadron with the F-18 Hornet, Blight, and Lucky. Gold Star, 31st Squadron, with the F-18 Hornet, Matrix, Alley B, Simba, and Poosh. Rattler, 1st Squadron, with the AV-8B, Jigsaw, Macaboo, and Reddo. Griffin, 3rd Squadron, with the AV-8B, Chopsticks, and Tuxer. Lightning, 4th Squadron, with the AV-8B, Cypher, Hi, Babe, Tanky, and finally, last but not least, Saint with 16th Squadron, Vigan, Stoat, Space, Chef, and Sock. On track, uh, 14, flight 314. 505, five, one's ready to taxi, let me know when you guys are. Right, let me just do some lights and stuff. Are we already armed up? Uh, cover. I need lights. I'm an old man. I've got broken eyes. I need lights, all right? <clears throat> That's everything, right? Why cover? That's a nice uh, scepter cap Jaguar you've got there. It hurts me deeply to wear this round door. I just want you to know. No, it doesn't. It, it makes you feel special for once and a little bit more talented than you. Really? Two little bombs? That's all we've got? Uh, you've got two center lines, so we've got four rock eyes. <laughs> Rock eyes are terrible, they always were. Do you expect us to kill tanks with these freaking things? Well, we got lovely Jaguars, but these idiots here got bogs. Ha 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 ha. Rock has got uh, one ready to protect me. And 14 Squadron taking uh, active runway 2 for straight out of party. Ready to take 251, hi. Hi, hi! Hello! Where's Shrek? Oh, my secret favourite. I don't see Shrek during briefing, so it might just be a I'm ready, right behind you. Come on and cover, push the lever forward. Alright, same reflect on the roll, push waypoint one. Alright, roll it up to 80, brace off, hold back. Alrighty then. Oh, I've done something wrong, what have I done? Oh, I need that. We're gonna keep the burner on to oh, 20 knots, and then we'll pull back full drive. Sorry, Whistler. That could have been worse, right? Yep. <laughs> yeah, you can tell I'm not feeling well. <laughs> got that, got the heart going. Yeah, uh, flat. Woof. One of the myriad of reasons I was never allowed to be a real pilot. Cross through my CCISP side. Why is that? Are you getting it? Uh, not yet. I haven't arced up yet. Okay. Anyway, I'm worried about fusing.
Clear throttle project. All right, I am. Um, yeah, lights off now. Oof, my uh, AWACS just went mental. <laughs> yeah. He just really wants to talk. Should I tell you something that'll make you feel bad, bad, or good, or lucky? Sure. <clears throat> In today's war games, uh, each of us had to install over 20 gigabytes of mods. 20 gigabytes, total about 25 mods. <laughs> hey, I know why. I don't do war games. So don't ever complain about anything ever again. Is what I'm saying. Lightning, airborne and on route to 8.1. Oh, lightning's here. I didn't realize we had lightnings. <laughs> were lightnings still operating in 84? Oh, yeah, of course they were. Interestingly, one of your nozzle boosters is open and one is closed. Are you doing that as part of a fashion show cover? Yeah. He's trying to be fashionable, Valley viewers. We love to be fashionable. So, Cabot, I get the feeling it's going to be a very boring mission. Talk me through your day. Uh, my day is pretty early because it's fairly noon. So, I woke up, cleaned up dog pee, worked out, and now I'm going to do gents. How about yours, Cap? You work out? Oh, that impresses me more slightly. Uh, tell me about your workout session. What did it involve? Uh, me not being as fat and lazy as I want to be. So, I don't have to ask for a seatbelt extension on the airplane. That's about it. Huh. Okay. It's honest. Whistler, what did you do today? I hope you worked out. I repair system fix because yesterday I got it replaced. Uh, there's some kind of smart inflation system that they kind of forked a bit, and that was just a quick fix, though. There you go. Love it when they get a tire in the shoulder and you can't repair it. Well, well at least the enemy, at least the friendly AI isn't completely okay. Oh, Jesus Christ. A little remedial. Cover, there's some text on the screen. Cover, cover, cover. Yes, I, sure. I'm putting the text over your body. Your lovely worked out, bo glistening body. Now it should auto sequence the waypoint for you when we cross this. Ready viewers, look at these lovely RAF Jaguar aircraft. Mmm, Jaguar. If you squint really hard. I have mine set to come off in pairs, so two drops and get the hell out of Dodge. What speed do you make it come? 420. We'll push the high load out at her. Yeah, fun. Fun's important during a mission. Which waypoint are we on now? Uh, we're pushing IP. Wow, that was quick. Alrighty then. Alright, oh, here we go, valued humanoids. I see what you're saying, Whistler. The external view is a little weird. Going to the Russian front. Okay, push waypoint two. So after we hit target, we stay together. Exo is waypoint seven. We'll be there, separate, and go back for a second round. Cover. This terrain is as speechless as your face. What kind of you say? Picking up a hawk site on the one o'clock, surely that's friendly, question mark? Yeah, that should be friendly. I will say this terrain following uh, autopilot is crazy sweet. Can't figure out why it's not auto sequencing my uh, weapons. Didn't even know it was a thing. Nerd. Yeah, 
got a waypoint sequence automatic on, so I don't know why it's not switching when I was push. Alright, set steer 3, or correction, steer 4, we're going hunting. Uh, we're framed by Chicago, we're 540 speed. All flight saver, past adder, hunting. Go combat spread. Come on, bottom up. Oh yeah, we're here guys. We're at the baddies. Yep, looking for them now. They'll be between four, five, and six. Right. How exciting. Yeah, don't drop them too early. We got friendlies out there. Yeah. It's been one of these missions where you fly all this way and you get shot by the first shell. That's the hard time with that thing. Watch for those smoke trails. So I think the targets are going to be just beyond waypoint four. Alrighty then. Egress is over right, waypoint seven. Whoops. Ten miles to waypoint four. No hostile radiation yet, which is a bit weird. Right, uh, ten miles to friendly. Possibly not checking uh, come right lately. Big group. You got some on GMT. I've got them on GMT. Huh. All right. Uh, I'm looking for this target. Got a painted. Why can't I see it on GMT? There it is. Oh yeah, look at that. Blow me down. Cap target locked. Are we happy they're baddies? Uh, maybe. Painted. It's a 12 o'clock. I'm assuming these are baddies, but we'll see. Yeah, I'm happy these are baddies. Can't see these bastards. Yep, nice big bandit, or blocks. Sam launch. I'm going to base it. Crack fire. Yeah, I saw that sucker. Are you down? Yep, I'm down. God damn it. Whistler progress? Wait. Was that radar guided? Yeah, it's an SAE. What a nightmare, guys. Are you dead, Whistler? Now I am. Alright, just me. Oh, shouldn't we have to... Wow, more, lots more missiles. Shouldn't I be getting a warning about that? All missiles. Would you look at that? Would you look at that?
a goodie or a baddie? What are you? Well, the fight again. Look at that. Look at that. What's going on? Who is that? I'm unsure whether I need to destroy that or not. Cover, do I need to destroy this Sam that I'm next to? Uh, you're supposed to destroy everything you find, but uh, looks like everybody's pretty much dying immediately. Yeah, we. Not uh, super gap. There's a million SAAs and geckos out there. I don't know, viewers, what do you reckon? Are we going to blow it up? Done stupider things. Top Gun 2 shit going on here now. Still don't really understand if you're a goodie or baddie. I think you must be a baddie. So I'm coming for you. Ha! I did not think about the cloud. I did not think about the cloud at all, did I? I get the feeling they're friendly, that's why I don't want to bomb them, I'm really not sure. I'm pretty sure I'll be dead by now. They are friendly. They are friendly. Oh, um, good job, I missed them then. Minister, Roger, southeast. Heading southeast. <coughs> Man, it's hard knowing which guys to shoot. Take a quick sip of tea and we'll go and try again. Them. What could possibly go wrong, huh? Getting a taste for yeah, everything for you now, huh? Okay, that's fine. Bumped into some hostile tanks, but I can't beat their armor with these bombs, so I'm going around looking for something weaker. You want a big radar site? Yeah, I do want a radar site. 070 for 11. Yep. Update track. Radar, yeah, I've run into a bit of a wall here. Did not like me, did they? This is going to be hard. Took a bit of damage, but I'm okay. We're British, don't you know? Really hard. 
Can you try picking me a route? Because every time you send me in there, I just get shot by the tank. It's gone, and another bit of me falls off. Zero for nine. I'm gonna bring you around the north side of the main call. Say the number again. Zero seven zero nine. What? You're gonna go over a few tanks, but you go fast. That's it. Okay. Yeah, just book it. Things a friggin' bucket. You're gonna still trespass on two SA but not much we can do about that. I need an F-16. Heroes. <coughs> yeah, I don't know how we're expected to get through a ton of SA8. <laughs> oh man, you didn't tell me it was a freaking book. That was a book you sent me into, you know? That is a hard piece of kit even nowadays. I hey book. Oh, it's, a it's like a book to me, mate. It's a book, isn't it, guys? That is a book. I, I can tell you right now it's a book. Look, and that's a book. Hey, I don't see Gopher, I don't see a book. Yeah, it's a book. Put it this way, Cap, anybody that's actually made to the front lines is essentially dead, with the exception of like two. And they haven't pushed to a target yet. Oh, there's a helicopter out there. Yes. One more way. And a miss. Bean! So does taking out a train count. Sure, why not? Uh, you were brutal on this one, Major. Yeah, I mean, I tried to try to reflect on the reality of how it would have been. Now we know why we would just lob nukes. I did say that. From orbit. It's the only way to be sure. Also, back central heating at another. Yeah, imagine the savings they'd have on their yeah. Let's see if Beanie eats an SA8. Oh, Beanie's down. If Beanie was the guess we deserve. Yep, that looked like it hurt. Lioness. Oops, they're scary. Macabu's found a body. Yeah, I, I will say those rock eyes are useless. They did hit it. Hard. Yeah, the yeah. BL BL some five five wasn't much better. I mean, I think the air forces would have said, "Leave it to the armies. Leave it to the armor and the anti tank guided missiles and the mm -hmm. basically the anti tank helicopters." But yeah, the thing is, Apache owned it. Yeah. Situation like well, that's why they were invented. They weren't around at the time. But the um, this, this situation, it's all hands to the pumps, and the attrition rate for the fast jets would have been horrific. Mm -hmm. And a lot of friendlies are going to be lost. Ouch. 
this is what this is what those strellas those uh what are they called tunguskas what they were designed for sit on this battlefield and just smash harriers down and stuff like that nasty and we respond with standoff guarded weapons mm. but imagine if we didn't right. i think the big problem was the, the visibility was not 3100 meters i've never seen it this good the visibility in germany no that's true uh, but the thing is that's i set it to 3000 meters in the mission register and that's how it turns out Hmm. I'm not complaining. No, I don't think that the um, mission editor replicates the, ver the weather very well. I mean, you've s I've seen videos where Cap does the old uh, beam approaches, and you're thinking, well, this is not IFR. But you can still feed sequence. I don't think it handles fog and haze. No, I don't think it does. Like, but... It'll hold about low clouds out there. If it for the smoke trail, I would have never seen what shot down cover. That's what I went for a play on, but I don't think that was anything. Yeah, I mean, I hit a tank at least with my rock eyes and didn't scratch it. But I oh. did remember how to use the radar, which was cool. So this mission was a historical reenactment of how bad the missions were? Pretty much. Um, it, it was... I'm, I designed it to try and reflect what the reality would have been had we gone to war in 1944. Uh, the only thing that you could say was the Russians were would have been as bad as they seemed to be in Ukraine. And the armor and the army, the, the NATO ground forces would have chewed them up good and proper. Mm -hmm. The air forces were only there to try and do what damage they could. They would have switched fairly quickly to the sort of classic interdiction, get through the front line, go and bomb fuel dumps, bridges, supply lines, that kind of stuff. Yeah, I was going to say, it seems pretty hopeless for yeah, cluster support. To, to be fair, a year later, pretty much we'd all Check gone to, uh, uh, to interdict right. strike well, we'd pretty much given up this. Um, yeah. Yeah, fixed targets are the bigger Right, well, basically remember, 1984 was when the Tornado 15 Squadron started up at Larbrook um, in the middle of uh, 84 and was released to Sackler. Um, and uh, it totally changed, I mean, the way the way we operated, to be fair. Well, they were never designed really for cast, though. They were for bigger picture strikes, weren't they? Well, exactly. We, 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 we did not do cast. Literally, uh, all the stuff we did was, um, well, uh, we had a very limited role in CAS, and we've discussed oh. it, and, uh, and it was only when things really went bad. Yeah, and the, the Jags were the same, but in 1982 and 1994, when I was serving, <laughs> the first few missions would have been all hands to the pump to support the army to try and stem the invasion. And it's it would have been like this. It would have been high attrition, very dense anti-aircraft, uh, stuff over the battlefield, it would have been really difficult. Um, and how you kill a blue? I feel like the, all the airframes that would have been awesome. Yep, it was. Well, I, this would have been the highest priority at the time, and you'd have done this for maybe 36 hours, and then any strike aircraft left would have switched to the deep interdiction role, and you'd have left this kind of stuff to the army and the helicopters. Mm. Yeah, Such but realistically, the with the weapons at the time, what we, what could you hope for? Maybe one unit per sortie? Yeah, and that's that's the point of this mission, is really to, to for guys to see how it was, uh, killed in blue. how it would have been, and you realize that actually, with the guided weapons we have now, it, this kind of thing is much easier. You stand way off, mm. you have the anti-radar missile, anti-radiation anti, -radar, anti -radiation missiles, and that kind of stuff. You do a big combined arms, you know, multi-mode attack, and this would be a lot easier now. But in those days, this is what we had. Mm. Yeah, I mean, Wars we came in low level. Very effective. Yeah, we're coming in low level in the Vigan. Great. You're flying between the trees, but you've got no recognition time. So it's so difficult. And if you pop up, you get a Sam up your ass. So, yep. you know, hats off to the guys who would have had to have flown it. Yeah, it's definitely terrifying. an eye opener. I mean, when you, yeah. when you read that it would have been high attrition, I wouldn't have imagined it this bad. Uh, the, it wasn't expected that the frontline squadrons in RAF Germany would uh, last more than about five days to a week. What did we? What did the uh, NATO have for close air support helos? They didn't. Was the Apache introduced in '84? I forget. Uh, I can't remember when it was introduced. It wasn't long after that. But the main anti-armor stuff tank. would have been would have been tanks and infantry with anti-tank guided missiles. What about you have H1 Cobras? Uh, they weren't. You know, I don't think the Cobras were in this theatre. Gazelles. Yeah, the Gazelle was there, but they were more in the uh, spotting role. And very yeah. much, very much, the selected use of uh, various weapons was was. I mean, that was the squadron I was on. That was our, one of our major roles. 
was a selective use to help the boys out. I'm just trying to see how <coughs> how this would have been feasible with the weapons that they had if you went conventional. Well, we didn't. We didn't stay conventional very long. Oh, I'd imagine so. Yeah. I mean, obviously, we we you know we had weapons that could be released at fairly low yield, and uh, literally we could air burst them and go and lock them all over the place. Uh, Does that mean you fit EMP damage rather than actually physical damage? Well, it, it does. It, it basically means there's a, it's not dirty. So if you're an offensive, um, if you're in the offensive mode, generally you use um, airburst weapons because you don't get the fallout. Obviously, so if you're yeah. you know and you don't want fallout if you're about to take over the control of the land. But politically, we didn't do, we did it because obviously it was politically we were dropping bombs in West Germany. Yeah, the, the fallout radiation comes from the soil, essentially, that atomizes when it, air, when it ground bursts. Or, so yep. if you air burst the, it, you get a lot less. How you deployed such weapons also depended on who's doing the tasking. If you, because they have d various different effects. So if you want a blast effect, you'd want it maybe low air burst or ground burst. EMP, you'd want a higher air burst. And it would depend very much on who was tasking, what they wanted to achieve. I'd like to try this with, like, early 90s level, like, you know, 1990 levels. Just a couple of patches out there, some early A10As, very basics of standoff type weapon that I like would be a very interesting tool at that point. Because this was probably peak Warsaw Pact performance, right, in terms of unit makeups for the most part. Didn't get much better by the 90s. No, they didn't. In fact, 1989, I think, was when the Berlin Wall fell, and then thereafter the Russian, Russian armed forces declined hugely. And, and remember, the ground launch cruise missiles came in in uh, 80, late '85, which totally changed the role um, of the um, tornado squadrons. If these guys are remaining with any sense, they'll go home. I am incredibly stoked when the uh, tornado is released. Yes, I'm looking forward to that. The, the only thing that I, what kind of worries me is um, I don't know how they're going to be, you know, make it a single guy, or you're going to have to have two people in it to actually use it properly because. You know, the real one, there's bugger all in the front. You can't even select a weapons package. Oh, well, I mean, I'd imagine with as much work as they've done on multiple for recent and upcoming modules, it probably should be good. And, and obviously, TFRing at night using the radar, I mean, obviously, if you're TFRing, you don't need to be in the front seat. And once you've selected the buttons, to be honest, even to hit the target, but you, you do actually generally, well, no, even the navigator can commit, actually, come to think of it. You could actually fly the aircraft in the back seat once you've got the TFR engaged in the route in the kit. So I suppose maybe that's one way to do it. I was going to say the back seat has a full set of controls, don't it? Oh, right, now that's a trainer version, which is different to the normal, well, obviously you've got a stick. Um, and yes, there is more more um, you can do in the back and the front with weapons packages and all that. So you, theoretically you can fly a two-seat from the back. But uh, most of them, that was only literally it. Scrodden had one of those, that's all. How does the Jester work with bombing and a Tomcat? I wonder if they might try and pick some mm. of that uh, logic up. Yeah, I mean, that's what I'd say. Yeah, it's not hard. You've got the, the AI selection wheel, and then there's a couple, like, gamey type things where it'll pop out a display for the targeting pod if you're using it from the front seat. It'll replace the, uh, whatever, the, the bottom screen. It's a bit well, of a faff, though. Multi-crew would be cool, though. Yeah, I mean, Absolutely. obviously, with the Tornado, pretty much every bomb we dropped was a radar bomb, probably... Um, an offset radar bomb, i.e. the radar was looking at, not at the target, but something miles away that um, you knew was had a fantastic radar signature and then they did an offset from the ra that radar certificate point to the target. So most of our bombing was offset target <laughs> radar bombing uh, at night, TFR in, I mean, IMC basically. Um, so obviously looking at the target isn't really particularly important. The radar is supremely important. I have to say, even even today doing this, it was a lot more challenging than I thought it would Wait. be, even in the area with the Fleur. For all of us, kept, we've scored kept, six kills for all of us. <laughs> six kills. Mm. I kept yeah, thinking, I, I want a second guy picking out targets for me whilst mm -hmm. I do the flying. Yeah, the, you, the problem with it, if you had... How many JTAX stroke forward air controllers would you have needed to target this lot? <coughs> Each with their own frequency and mm. this and the other. Horrendous. I mean... This this was essentially day one, trip one of the war, and it would have been horrific. I mean, the expenditure of, on both sides would have been just astronomic. And the most effective weapons here would not have been 
the fighters and the, the ground attack aircraft. It would have been the tanks and the guys with the uh, man portable anti tank guided missiles. Mm -hmm. And look how that's yeah. changed in the last right. few decades. Well, if you're looking at this, it makes sense the Russian doctrine of build it cheap, reliable, easy to maintain. Because it's like, why spend 10 times more on a fighter that's going to last five minutes? But that was always the, on, the, on the west side, wasn't it? The idea was that they always knew they were going to be less than, so they had to have kind of force multiplied technology to try and stop this red wave. <laughs> the thing is that after a day and a half or so of this, they, they would have switched the ground attack, air, air, ground attack aircraft to roles that suited them better. So things like the Jaggers would have done interdiction, airfield attack, and that kind of stuff. And that was much more suited to, to the, the way they worked. So this close air support stuff really was only done a lot by the Harrier uh, in the RAF. And it, it, we felt very uncomfortable doing it because the Jag wasn't suited to it, nor was the Buccaneer. So we'd have preferred to get onto the lo deep strike interdiction rolls against sort of petrol oil depot uh, dumps, lines of communication, um, communication centers, and that kind of stuff. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense. Hot stab. It makes sense. I mean, you're not killing any of this stuff, really. But eventually, they're gonna, you know, the ground forces are going to trade each other. So if you can break their lines of supply and communication, then the front line kind of stabilizes long enough. But I, I don't think the GR3 had um, uh, a radar, did it? No. no, it had a. It certainly had a laser ranger. I think it also had a marked target seeker. So it would have been really tricky to find targets. Yep, <coughs> you'd have basically been doing it visually. But remember, the um, in those days, CCIP bombing, everybody thought how wonderful it was. It wasn't very good in those days. Mm. So we all needed a slant range sensor, and that's why we all had laser, and in the tornado we had AGR, just like the uh, F-18's got. And literally, we would, we would, we would uh, AGR and laser everything, you know, just because we need that slant range, because mm. we didn't have good G... There was no such thing as GPS in those days. Mm. And our INS used to run away at about two or three miles an hour, and I think the Jaguar, uh, until it got Fin 1064, was even worse, was it, uh, Matrix? No, the, the original Ferranti INAS, sorry, Marconi uh, Navwas was, it was okay, but it depended on how good your align was. If it was a good align, it was generally in the order of the two to three miles, miles uh, in an hour. But if you, it was rather sensitive to dumping, so a, a big shock and you got the big green cross and that up displayed, you thought, shit you're back to map and, map and stopwatch. Mm. But um, there are various degraded modes, and if you were using one of those, they would drift quite a lot. And, and to be fair, most of the fixes we did, the primary thing we were fixing was the height channel, not the, ver not the horizontal channel. It was the height channel, because as it's just like if you, in DCS, we put in the wrong target altitude, and you try and do um, an auto-release, and it's useless, you know? And literally, 100 foot in the height channel out, and... The the the, um, the kit's got no idea. So the lower you are, and the the more gentle the angle is, the, the worse the the height channel becomes. Yeah, so in... but the figure on this, obviously, you dial the QFE in for the target, because obviously we're ranging across quite a few waypoints. Basically, you're not getting bomb symbology. Just trying to like aim by eye. So, <laughs> yeah, not ideal. Uh, in, in DCS, probably the closest thing is like the SU twenty five A has like that laser. Ranger for the for the Pippa. Have you tried that at all? It's uh, so I actually I was able to use the F-18's air-to-ground radar and pick a, a moving target track. I just turned it on the auto bombing at the last minute. It hit it directly. It's just doing it. Use the AGR radar to find a target, locked it. it oh, well, it uh, all, in the in the F-18, all the AGR does the screen goes blank and it just gives you a range. So. Mm -hmm. No, it'll actually you, it'll actually set it as uh, <coughs> a, a speed. Uh, 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 right uh, when I did that, it automatically changed it out of CCIP mode and went to an auto bombing mode. Oh, I see what you mean. Right, okay, so I just I just I just AGR it and CCIP it, then. which is basically the you know the, the, the laser way of doing it. Hmm. Yeah, I mean in peacetime you didn't use the laser ranger in the jack because you didn't want people suing you for eye injuries and the like but in wartime you do use it all the time i was gonna say i watched something the other day that was saying that it had uh it might have been the tornado but it was saying that it had poor performance during testing or like trials because they couldn't use the wartime laser setting well we, we use the laser all the time uh, on ranges only 
and it, it was it was pretty good. And the, uh, the obviously it was a, a marked target receiver and lane, so there's a range fine. And obviously it did dual role, and it was bloody good at picking up, um, you know, a little soldier man in front of his, uh, front of his laser at it. We were very well at that. And that was about the only cast that we did, was with a guy on the ground pointing the laser. Yeah, that definitely helped things in the Jag. It made things much, much easier. You could just fly your on full line through the target bar, commit the attack, and it would be spot on. But uh, occasionally had the army would, instead of shining the laser from on your track towards the target, they'd shine it at you from beyond the target. So, of course, the first thing the laser ranger, mark target seeker, looks at is the guy's laser. So your bomb for your target marker peers over the guy lasing rather than the target. Well, I must admit, I actually dropped a couple of concrete ones um, using um, using that on the on, the, on the, was it Wiley Sike? Spare down away. Yeah. You know, we did a bit of that there, but that, that was the only close air support we ever did. Yeah, we didn't do much. Um, Jag wasn't really suited. So I don't think we'll need to repeat this particular mission. I think next time it'll be something different. Yeah, I think we've been appropriately punished. Well, to be fair, I must admit the outcome was exactly as I expected. I said at the start, those ZSUs are going to just eat us alive. Yeah, I called it too. I said, Cap, we're going to eat a missile, aren't we? Cover's like, yep, that's, that's what we're going to get. Well, we were down flying between the trees, and we had a lot of SAMs come up, but they couldn't track us. Um, I picked up the um, ZSU, made a pass on it, pulled up, because obviously I was bloody low, and unfortunately the uh, bomb frags got me, and there were no drag bo uh, high drag bombs, so <laughs> I effectively fragged myself, which is a little embarrassing. And the problem with the, with the Shilker is, when you fly towards it, it makes you an easy target for them. Well, literally, oh, yeah. we are so low and fast that uh, it literally just popped up. And you get reaction time is ridiculously short, so I don't know how the guys did it because to pop up to search for a target, you're going to get nailed by everything on the battlefield. Yeah, and of course, to be fair, the area where it was flat was a bit of a lack of trees and there wasn't much cover. And I mean, I, I got eaten by a 23 4, and literally, I saw the bullet, the first bullet, and then I exploded. I just have to be point got chopped by triple A. Yeah, so I, I did a poor job of dropping on the SAM site that took out Matrix, and I was just following the uh, or trying to get back on the the track, and I was just barreling along low level, and yep, Shulka point blank in the face. Never saw it coming. I mean, the Harrier guys seem to be doing better. Yeah, I got greedy. I popped up to. Um, do an air-to-air -air attack on the um, points and, and got an SA-8 lock warning and then blew up, <laughs> like almost instantly. <laughs> I think there was a, something in uppercase about that uh, in the briefing. Yeah, yeah, I know, but it felt like karma because I was, you know, getting greedy and going after Heinz. Yeah, I was, to be I mean, fair, it, a number of the Harriers were engaging blue forces, so it was less red to the craft. Again, it's, it's, it's a big issue, it would have been a big issue in those days. But those AI Heinz, one of them had a pop at the uh, Blue Harriers with its uh, 86s. Which is kind of impressive. Well, uh, I think in those days we had the Golf, so uh, you couldn't actually do a lot of damage with a, a 9 Golf, to be fair. It was very, very fucking useless. Yeah, also, <laughs> like you're saying, like the target identification like <laughs> when you're over, over there, by the weather, flying super low, looking for targets. And then you know what's what, who is the good guys, what are the bad guys, it's, it's hard, man. Do, do you know how? Very difficult. The, the only way I was able to do it was if they started firing at me. Yeah. Yep, <laughs> I need to keep an eye on that one. And to be right. fair, d trying to do this in VR is just about three months. Well, I mean, it would have been very difficult in reality because of the uh, camouflage. Yeah. And in, if you had damp conditions and, and the armoured vehicles and the other stuff that was moving around wasn't throwing up big dust trails, you'd be very hard pushed to, to see these things. The best thing to do is actually find a road and fly down there. I was, I was actually finding a lot of traffic. I should turn the traffic off because I was looking at little cars on the road. Say, that's a target, that's a target. None of them were. They were like school bosses and stuff. Yeah, okay. <laughs> there's no, there's civilians. no civilians on the battlefield. Yeah, a lot of them. I didn't shoot. I didn't kill any civilians, though. I think. 
couple of things for me to take home for the uh, for the next mission or two. Yeah, and unfortunately, yeah. I, 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 I found a couple of trains. I thought, well, I can't see anything else. I'll do for me. If I turn the traffic off, I shouldn't see anything but the enemy and friendly vehicles we're supposed to see, right? Because the traffic is kind of like uh, just for looking. It's cosmetic, here. yeah. So yeah, it depends yeah. if it's forced on or forced off on the mission. Right? Oh, oh, okay. M multiplayer, not your own. Uh, okay, cool. So, do we think these guys are just refueling and rearming and going back again? They are. After that, I'd just be like, I'm going to the mess. Yeah, I think if you manage to get back, you'd deserve a good one. Tea and stickies, mate. Yeah, something a bit stronger than that, really. Whiskies, yes. Problem is, we didn't go back to the mess. We, we didn't go back to the mess. We used to have to go back to the PPF and live in a fucking concrete bunker. Yeah, oh, only the other sweaty, smelly people. And, and, and take your flying suit and everything off and, and, and uh, put a fresh NBC suit as you uh, as you came in. I mean, the decontamination was a right bloody fun. And of course, later <laughs> on, uh, we had the navigators flew with the uh, fire. <laughs> oh, I did that. Chair. Yeah, the, I was the first on the squadron who had actually done the formal AR-5 training course. So, of course, whenever you had somebody come along, like an American general or whatever, and they said, hey, I, I don't believe this stuff, I said, well, we'll fly you. So they'd say to me, get in the front of a T-Bird, because you couldn't fly it solo. Get in front of the two-seater, safety pilot in the back, and you go off and do air combat on July day in the AR-5, and that was a sweaty experience. Some people pay money for that, though. Only if it's wielded by somebody wearing some fishnets and a suspender belt. What we do you guys say? Sir. Hi. Yeah, what, what do you guys say the, the bingo fuel for the Harrier usually? Um, you know, like that 1500, something like that? Or I, I know it depends on how far you're going, right? But... Uh, runway 22, clear and down. Yeah, sounds, sounds like a sensible figure, 1500. 50, yeah. Yeah. But to be fair, the way, I don't know, the way we used to use bingo fuels is we didn't have one, we didn't have a bingo fuel as such. What we used to do around the route was have probably three different bingos. And what the idea of the bingo was, was, and you called whatever bingo you're at, was so that the leader knew how everybody's fuel was going. Obviously, certain things you could use. That's the whole idea of it. Uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't just the, you know, uh, oh, I've got to go home with this fuel. It was... How's the fuel planning going around the route? Because obviously, if you get tapped, mm. you get bounced. Your reaction depends on how much fuel you've got. R Roger, yeah, yeah, makes sense. Especially yeah, when you have to call fuel states all the time in DCS, which I don't normally do it. Well, I mean, that, the, then, yeah. the call for "I need to go home" was Joker, uh, and the call for the, if we ever saw anything <coughs> on our squadron, the first thing we used to call was was always Buster, which is like max dry power. Uh, the boys' eyes would be out on stalks, and then you'd call where what what you saw. I don't know if you boys did that in the Jaguar. Yep, very similar. Yeah, same same doctrine. After dropping the tanks with the Harrier today, we had the engines banged <coughs> to the wall all the time, full power for the combat. <laughs> well, it's supposed can, to be that way, or yeah? Can I just say that that is everybody thinks all these fighters rush around at 650, 700 knots. Do you know, the only time I've ever flown, for example, I, we did some work with some F-16s, and we used to plan our routes like um, 420, 450, 480, um, sometimes 540 in the target room, but very rarely. And they saw our planning, which we planned, and they said, oh, can we just slow the transit down to um, uh, 360 knots? And we're like, why? And they basically said, well, we use too much fuel, and to be fair, you know, fully laden we're having to work quite hard to get these kind of speeds that you boys are talking about. But when you get to DCS and everybody rushes around at ridiculous mm -hmm. speeds and it's not realistic. And, you know, I mean, 560, five, 570 five knots with, with, you know, eight bombs on it and a couple of drop tanks is fucking fast, if you ask mm -hmm. me. And people don't realise that the difference between heavy laden and empty, the speed that you can do is 200 knots. Mm -hmm. I mean, the Jag was 
pretty good in that regard. And it didn't have a lot of power, but it had uh, quite low drag, quite a high fineness ratio, so long and thin. And so, the... I mean, the, you could cruise at 480 knots with a full wall load on. Um, you could push to 540 just about, but you'd be right up against max dry all the time. But yeah, 480 was good for cruise in, in wartime. The thing about the Jaguar that I seem to remember was, uh, do you not have to put full dry power on when you turn finals? Oof, awkward. Well, it depends if you were if you were doing a high alpha approach. Yeah, you could you could balance seventeen alpha against whatever power is required. And, and if you felt you wanted to risk going beyond the angle of attack limit, you could do very tight uh, visual circuits at full burner, but maintaining stupid angle of, angles of attack. But if the aircraft departed, you had no chance. But no, it, I mean you don't, the only time you'd need to use full uh, full dry power on a in the circuit would be if you were really heavy. So if you had a problem after takeoff and you had to return and you made, you took it a bit tight, yeah, you would be close to full power, but generally... I, I just did a few trips at Lossy with, um, I think, Wing Commander Ops, and I'm not sure who was the best Jaguar flyer in the world. He fucking frightened me. Uh, no names, I guess. <coughs> but you were, I reckon you were on the OCU at the time. So it would be 1981, that was. No, no, I would... Uh, I got on the... Ah, right, now. so first time through the OCU, yeah. Uh, no, 1982, I went through. I'm not even going to bother watching TAC for you. I think everyone knew, you know, roughly what happened. But um, I'd say a large percentage of us were hit, probably on first contact. Is that fair to say? Yes. Yeah, yeah that's fair. Yep. The ex expectation was that either, both sides would take very heavy losses because of the intense uh, anti-aircraft environment over the battlefield. And th that changed not long after with the introduction of guided weapons, Apache helicopters, stuff that was more suited to this. But yeah, at the time, we would have taken heavy losses. Which is exactly what happened. A couple of guys survived, so well done for them. Operating at that low level at those speeds, it's incredibly difficult to pick up and identify targets with a decent reaction time. So, so the Vigans, we came in between the trees, but it gives you a fraction of a second to pick a target <coughs> and then make a drop on it. Yeah, the I, glare of the sunrise wasn't helping either. Yeah. Then at, at the weather, the bad weather plus the speed plus the low flying, yeah, it was pretty challenging, a hard, hard. And when we switch to the interdiction stuff or the air-to-air -air or whatever, it will be easier because the aircraft and the tactics were more designed to do that rather than this close air support stuff. And, and to be honest, you know, in, in those days, the red and green flags actually really replicated what was happening in 2A Tough. They were basically a copy of 2A Tough, which obviously was the, you know, the the biggest, highest threat environment that was going around in the uh, 80s and early 90s. True, apart from the desert. Well, uh, the terrain was different, but what I'm saying, the tactics and the way we did things was the same out there. Even the Americans did the, roughly the same thing, because obviously they were involved in, uh, well, I don't know, they weren't 2 ATAF. What were they, down south, they were what? I can't remember, 4 ATAF? No, four, 4 ATAF. Yeah. So the Americans were doing exactly the same thing, just further south with the Canadians. I hope you enjoyed that. I'll see you guys later. Cheers, Cap. Cheers, Cap. Cheers, Cap. Cheers, Cap.